Hello and welcome back to Business Economics. Today in this video we are going to talk about investment. What is an investment? If we traditionally think about investment, most people in your generation might think, okay, this has something to do with the stock market, but it doesn't necessarily have to do with the stock market. It can also be investment in the in assets, uh, fixed assets as such, for example, machinery, but it could also be investments in things like uh, production equipment, it could also be investment in uh, infrastructure, it could be investment in many different things. Uh, first of all, if you think about two types of investment in a company, you might want to think about, for example, uh, investing in skilled labor, but also investing in machinery that can keep production up to date. This is what we're going to primarily focus on in business economics in HOHOX. We're primarily going to focus on investment in production equipment that can help you maintain or to be able to compete with competitors at a successful rate. Focus on investment. Tangible assets, machinery, buildings, production equipment, vehicles, for example, a principle for investment in intangible assets, that is production development, patents or goodwill. If in a, to assess if an investment is profitable, that's pretty much what we are aiming at. And the reason why we are aiming at this is because you might see, okay, the investment might not be profitable after year one or year two or year three but if it's profitable after year five it might actually be a great uh, might actually give the company a competitive advantage and then actually be reason for, enough for the company to actually invest making an investment when investing in new vehicles the company must make an outgoing payment at the time of the purchase However, the income and payment generated from the use of the vehicle does not materialize until later. This should make sense because if you buy a machine, uh, you need time in order to use it, you need time in order to get production going, you need time in order to actually be able to be profitable, uh, to create a profit of running this machine. It doesn't happen from uh, necessarily from day one. The vehicle this means capitalized is tied up in a period of when the time between cost and income is longer, more than two years, then we can consider whether this is the most profitable way to invest the capital, or rather if earnings would be higher by investing in, for instance, stocks. That could be a good example, or maybe bitcoins. We don't know. If what we have seen uh, recently is a uh, interest rate level of um, uh, nearly zero or below zero, so we have actually seen the stock market uh, um, increasing quite dramatically uh, within the last couple of years, and there's no reason why that's not going to continue in the next coming years with the uh, with the uh, outgoing with the um, current uh, interest rate level in, uh, in uh, central banks. When we have looked at economic decisions made in previously, we have looked at income cost uh, in the course. Uh, however, assessing investments, we want to look at the cash flow. The reason why we want to look at the cash flow, and I know that you have been introduced to the cash flow in the cash flow statement, is presented in many business uh, um, business economic exam tasks. Uh, the reason is that the interest is paid off the cash flow. This is where we look at the interest. So the interest rate and how much is paid in interest rate is taken off the cash flow, and therefore we need to consider the cash flow in comparison with the investment. In order to make an assessment, we prepare an investment calculation and reason for investment one replacement of an investment this is where we replace something 
we typically replace it because replacing is the most um, essential thing to do because in a way uh, replacing uh, something which is out of date which runs uh, inefficient which uh, which might uh, require a lot of uh, maintenance can be uh, be the best thing for a company to do but it's of course also a, 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 a an expensive thing and uh, it can be very hard to uh, to reverse so if you have taken the decision you need to keep the investment expansion that's also very likely we see um Capacity management. We have uh, we have t uh, been taught that it might be a problem for a company if, for some reason, uh, the scarce resources uh, keep the company uh, from uh, uh, fulfilling its potential. This is typically what happens when a company ends up in a situation where they can't make when they can't uh, uh, fulfill the demands of the market. So if a company are not able to meet the demands of the market and meet the demand of customers, it typically ends up in a situation where customers will search for the product at a different in a different place. Rationalization investment is also an investment that could be made in terms of rationalizing the company, maybe prioritizing in a different way, lower cost of production, uh, forced investments, uh, that's typically also something that happens. This can be if the government or if the municipality suddenly decides that the company needs to run, uh, maybe maybe it has to uh, quit using diesel cars, it may have to do something different where it's not really a choice, it's something that they need to do. If they don't do it, they will not be able to run a business in this uh, this. Um, municipality or this country so in uh, in some uh, in some situations the company are actually forced to consider these things welfare investment also very interesting no one ever regrets building a bridge someone says but it might also be extremely expensive to build a bridge uh, Ørsunds, uh, the Ørsunds bone uh, both bridges or heavily discussed before actually being built, but no one regrets it today. It's the same with the idea of maybe building a credit debt pool. It might also end up in a situation where people have to, uh, a lot of people will uh, will, uh, will be asking, why should we use a hundred, hundred billion corner on building a bridge? But typically after a while, it will pay itself back. Investment. Relationship capacity, investment to maintain capacity, investment to adjust capacity, investment to expand its uh, capacity, investment to become more efficient. So therefore, there are many different reasons for investment, but the m most important and the most uh, central thing that you guys have to consider is that investment is something where the company needs to make a choice. They need to make a choice and they need to look in the... Um, not just in one year, not just in two years, but they may, might need to look into 30 years. Is this uh, is this going to be worthwhile? For example, if uh, a company like Mast, uh, Mast AP Müller, they have uh, they buy a new company, it might actually be 10 years, 20 years before they can actually make a profit of this investment. But still, they do it. When is an investment profitable? Big question. In this course, we are going to focus on the easy way to consider this, but there are many ways that you might understand this, because what is profitable, actually? Is it also profitable if it makes a positive uh, positive difference for, for many people? But investment calculation. How to assess an investment calculation. Companies should go forward with investment that works towards the strategic goal of a company, both economic and non-economic. Strategic goal, tactical goal, and operational goals. Remember the three layers. Strategic goals, that's the CEO and chairman of the board that decides, okay, which way should a company uh, move strategically. Uh, the company should go forward with the investment that works towards the strategic goal of a company. 
both economic and non-economic tools. Economic tools, to assess these, it is important that economic consequences of investment are clear. Non-economic tools, hard to quantify, so this will often be weighted in pros and cons. This can be, for example, does this create a profitable uh, uh, situation for society? For example, if we have a factory that we uh, we expand, we decide to expand in a neighborhood where they might have a lot of unemployment, how do we actually measure the positive so societal changes that this um, production, um, production actually um, helps society with? In this situation, we are in a situation where it can be difficult to actually, you might want to calculate it and you might try to calculate it, but how do you actually calculate it in a way that makes sense for all? If we look at investment calculations, we have to consider that in year zero. Year zero is the year where the investment is made. And if we see the cash flow, we have a positive cash flow and negative cash flow. And of course, when you buy a machine, if it costs 5 million, if it costs 10 million, if it costs 15 million corn, it will give a negative cash flow outgoing in the first year, so year zero. But then the positive cash flows will come in the years to come, F1, F2, and Fn, in the period here calculated. Investment value, all payments are incurred before it's ready for use. Positive cash flow, negative cash flow, and N is the lifetime period, physical or technical lifetime. All machines die at one point or another and need maintenance. So we're not in a situation where you don't have to, um, where you can't, um, uh, we're in a situation where you don't have to do this, but if in, um, in this one, we're talking about the scrap value. And if you talk about the scrap value, that's the value you can get for, for example, a, a, a machine at the end of the lifetime that you are going to use it. Because if you have a machine that runs efficiently that you don't have to put in the dump, you might actually be able to use it even longer than first anticipated. Therefore, you might ha have a period of time where you can use the product. Yes, the next one is the uh, F0 to Fn. The project incoming and outgoing payments estimated increase in earnings generated by the investment. So if we see here, net cash flow. And I have moved up here. Uh, so I'm still here. Um, how you can calculate the net cash flow? Example, you have the years here. In this example, five years, you invest 1.8 million in a machine. The scrap value after five years is 300,000. Yearly earnings is, in this case, 400,000, which then says that the net cash flow is. Uh, the yes, zero is, is here, which is not that positive. But then 400,000, 400,000, etc., down to year five, where it's suddenly more. Does this make sense? I think it's quite uh, easy to understand if you think about first year investment, cost money, fifth year, um, scrap value, value left for, for the product because it still has value and also the yearly earnings of the, of the usage of the machine. In this one, we are gonna talk about the net, press, uh, net present value. In Danish, we call it capital value between the present value. And what we're actually talking about here is the value obtained by discounting the amount of time the investor is given the interest rate called the discount rate. What we actually think of is the company has to consider, okay, either we invest in uh, production equipment or we put our money in something else. 
just keeping in the bank doesn't make that much sense. Discount rate is what the company as a minimum should make in return on the invested capital. This is of course interesting because we need to consider uh, what is required but also what is acceptable for the company and in order to uh, calculate if an uh, investment is profitable we need to put this into the calculation. Uh, setting the discount rate uh, is determined by taking the following account interest rate of a loan of the market rate, alternative interest rate, risk of the time horizon and inflation of course. So if we then go back to the, the previous one, we have a minus of 1.8 million and then in the year zero and then 400,000 until year five, where it's 700,000 because of the strap value of 300,000 plus the incoming net cash flow of 400,000. The investment is profitable if the net present value, which we call NPV, is greater than or equal to zero. This is given to the Here where we have an example, again the years and again the, the figures that we know from previously, but this time we take a discount rate of 12%. This means that the company has to consider we made this investment. If we haven't made the investment, we could have invested it in stocks or in uh, uh, or in other equity, or we could have invested it in bitcoins. Uh, and it could have uh, given us an increase of our value of our uh, wealth of uh, 12%. So if we see here from year zero to year five, the facts are one, then we have to, uh, uh, and the equation can be made both mathematically, but it can also be made in Excel, which is of course also mathematically. But it's uh, e the easiest way to do it is in Excel. Anyway, at the net present value in this case, when we take in the discount rate of 12% says that we have a, a, a negative uh, net present value after five years, which is not that good. And how we calculate it? The equation is here. And I've also made a video and it's also so it's also done in its cell where you can use this equation so the reasons the highest NPV capital and other issues so the net present value is of course the most important to look at so it has to be equal to zero or greater than zero in order to be uh, considered uh, profitable. But of course you can make certain calculations, for example, in the previous one, where you have the uh, uh, discount rate to be 12%, it might actually be very profitable for the company if you consider that instead of 12%, you lowered uh, your goals and you, uh, you said that you were satisfied with maybe a discount rate of 8% or 7%. Um, payback method, statistic payback method without taking interest into account. And then we have the dynamic payback method, taking interest into account, where we take the discount rate. So the statistic method, as we previously introduced, uh, where you don't take it into account, and dynamic payback method, where you take it into account. <laughs> 